Hello students. In this video, I'm going to go through something called Duhamel's Principle. It's also called the Variation of Parameters Formula. It's going to be for a specific case where we have a first order ODE plus, and then this A is going to be a constant. Now, it could be just a real number, like a real constant, like a 3 or a 5 or something like that, okay? It could also be a matrix constants. Um, any of the derivation that I do from this point on, I will um, respect the uh, order of uh, operations for matrix multiplication. And then on the right hand side, um, we'll have a function. And once again, this could be a vector function, just like y could be a vector and um, y prime could be a vector of derivatives. So everything I'm going to do here is going to work for vectors and matrices. Um, I'm going to leave off the initial value for a moment. Um, just because I want to point out some things about notation. So um, I'm going to multiply everything by an integrating factor, and that'll be e to the at. Then, um, now, if a is a constant, then of course e to the at commutes with a. If a is a matrix and e to the at is the matrix exponential, e to the at will still commute with a because the matrix exponential commutes with its matrix. So e to the a t times a is equal to a times e to the a t. Now remember in linear algebra, right, the commutative property is not um, something we can take for granted in the matrix multiplication. a b is not necessarily equal to b a. But with the matrix exponential, e to the a is equal to a to the e to the a times a is equal to a times e to the a. So the matrix exponential commutes with a. Um, all right, so um, then I just proceed just like we do with uh, integrating factor method. I recognize that the left-hand side is um, uh, the product rule. And so I collapse the left-hand side, and then I integrate both sides with respect to t. And now notice, uh, I want to make a big deal out of this, okay? So um, I get a constant of integration. Instead of making it a plus c on the right, I'm going to leave it here on the left. So it's going to be c plus. And then I'm integrating up to t. I left the bottom off of the, uh, the bottom limit of integration off deliberately. I need a dummy variable here. Um, so I'm going to use tau for my dummy variable. So that's my integration variable. So there's something I want to point out. The input is the upper limit of integration. So if you put a you know, y of 0 in and you make this e to the a times 0, the 0 goes in the upper limit of integration. OK. Now, I am going to give an initial value, but one other thing I want to point out is sometimes for a general solution, you'll actually see the integral written this way. And this is just a notational device to indicate there won't be a lower limit of integration. Um, it's just there to indicate that the input variable is t. Okay, let's uh, give an initial value. So y of t naught will equal y naught. And so then I'll put the t naught at the bottom here. And then I'll just rewrite the solution up here on the right-hand side just because I'm going to need some room to work. So I'm going to start to fill up the right column. I'm going to invoke the initial condition. So I put the t naught in wherever I see a t. And we see that the integral is 0. And I'm going to invoke the initial value, y of t naught is equal to y naught. OK, so now that that's 0, um, that part cancels out, so I'm left with c is equal to this product here. And then that just leaves me with the following simplification. So I rewrite everything I see up here. Um, c is a e to the a t naught times y naught. Um, I leave everything else as I had it up here. So nothing else has changed. Then I'm going to hit everything with e to the minus a t, and I'm going to respect that order of multiplication. If a were a constant, you wouldn't have to worry about that. And then um, I'm going to, uh, now you can do this with the matrix exponential as long as these matrices are the same. If a and a are the same, um, I can combine these two. So I'll have minus a t plus a t naught. However, I'm going to factor out a minus a. And so remember the minus sign will go with the t. And then a minus minus will give me a plus t naught. So I just did this nice little device. And it gives me something that looks pretty cool here. I get a t minus t naught. And so that almost looks like a delta t. And then the y naught stays there. 
I hit the integral with e to the minus a t naught. I'm sorry, e to the minus a t. And sometimes you'll see um, people sneak this exponential inside of the integral. I'm just going to leave it off for now. I think I've done enough manipulation. And that is Duhamel's principle for the specific case of our constant here. Yeah, you could actually do it in a more general case. Sometimes it's called the variation of parameters formula. This formula works for a being a constant. It also works for um, a being a matrix. And something else I do want to point out, um, notice that your solution here is a sum of two terms. And the term here is um, on the left part. This is your homogeneous solution. And this term here, this integral term, this is your particular solution. So we see that this solution here, y, is equal to the homogeneous solution plus a particular solution. And um, we don't, we expect that for non-homogeneous problems. And this f on the right-hand side certainly makes this equation non-homogeneous. All right, that's Duhamel's principle or the variational parameters formula for the case where we have a constant. And this works for scalars as well as matrices. Good luck.